rusting zinc or galvanized. In this video, we're going to show you how to get a rusty look on your zinc or galvanized. Here we have a nice piece of corrugated, and all I'm using here is some soap and water and a Scotch-Brite pad. Abrading the surface is really going to help you in the long run. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, and if you're trying to you do it on, say, a shed that has this corrugated steel on it, well, you're going to have to take that into consideration. But you can, if you can abrade it, the patina will take much better overall. So that's why we're doing it with soap and water this time, to show you that soap and water is completely fine. This is just a little Dawn dish soap in, mixed in with some regular water, and we're just going to scrub it up real good, rinse it off, dry it off, and then we'll be on our way. We don't need to do a big, huge sand, um, but if you wanted to sand it or sandblast it, go for it. Just be careful you don't go through all of the zinc coating if it's galvanized. That is something to keep in mind, but the better we clean it, the easier the patina will have to do its job. And to do this job, we're going to use the traditional slate black. Now, the Birchwood Presto Stainless Black works excellent for this one as well. I just happened to grab the stainless black for this one, and as you can see, it reacts very fast. Now, that does not mean that you want to rinse it very fast. You do need to give it a little bit of time. If I rinse this as soon as I had it coated, it would just rinse right off. We'd have a slight resemblance of something, but it wouldn't give you that nice rusty brown you're seeing now. So put it on, let it react for a couple minutes, then rinse it off. And this is one of those that I recommend wiping gently. The better you clean, the better it will stick. But overall, if you give it a little bit of wipe while you're at it, you can really make sure that you get all of the residue off. But if you can only hose it, that's fine too. I just don't recommend sealing it quite as fast because we may still have a little bit of reaction, which if you're going for kind of a nice rust, that's not gonna be a problem either. So rinse it off with water, give it a little bit of time, and then we can move on to sealing. Now, I'm gonna rinse this with water and wipe it down a little bit. So we'll have a little bit of modeling in on my piece here. And as you can see, we have it nice and rinsed here. And it's a little bit wet, so I'm gonna dry it out with moisture or with the propane torch to get all the moisture out. And as you can see, that's working very well. You do not need to do this step either. You can just leave it outside and the sun will take care of it, or you could just let it be, wipe it with paper towels and you're good to go. But I wanna bring out some of that richness again. So I'm gonna use the Sculpt Nouveau Metal Oil. Now the metal oil does not get near enough credit as it should. As you can see, it brings out some beautiful colors in this. and We'll lose a little bit of that really vibrant, bright orange, but overall, it gives such a nice effect to it. It deepens the darks and really just gives a nice character to it. Now, with the metal oil, normally I recommend rubbing on with circles, but given the circumstance of this piece here, how it's corrugated, I'm just gonna kinda wipe it on and kinda work with the grooves, and it actually blends in pretty well. The oil also has an auto leveler on it, so if you give it a little bit of evenness, it will usually take you the rest of the way. But this is one of those that you want to try and get some of the excess off if you can before it starts drying. So if you're working on a roof, like a shed, like we said before, you'll want to keep that in mind. I would normally recommend doing it kind of later in the evening when the airs cool down a little bit or earlier in the day, not necessarily at noon. One, it's going to be hot up there anyways, but the faster the metal oil can dry, the more uneven it's going to appear as well. When we usually talk about the metal oil, we usually talk about how it is a fantastic pause button in the sense that we can oil it and then ever clear it or clear guard it, essentially seal it in later with another sealer. So it allows us to do multiple oilings, and then when we're ready to ever clear everything at the same time, we can do that. In this case, we're gonna use just the oil. And one of the features we don't talk about near enough with the oil is that it's actually sprayable, in the sense that I can put it through the same sprayer that we use for our Everclear and ClearGuard. On our website, it's known as the Lacquer Sprayer, or our HTE AZ3 Iwata spray gun. And we can just spray it on. 
The nice thing about spraying it on is you don't have to worry usually so much about it going on too thick because you can control it with a sprayer better. And I normally don't even go back and burnish it in, though if you do see some thicker areas, I do recommend it. In this case, I rubbed on one coat and then I'm going to spray on two coats. And I'm giving it about an hour to two hours to dry in between coats. We don't want it to build up to where it's too thick but I am getting a good amount of thickness to where if this was going out on my roof, I'm not gonna have to worry about it for a while. The oil do, does normally need to be maintained, but with this being galvanized, I'm not as worried about it either. So if you want to seal it in and give it the best sealer possible, the Everclear would be the best bet for that. But for this case, I really just like how the oil looked and I wanted to keep it looking like that. And here we have our final piece of traditional stainless black with metal oil on galvanized corrugated steel. And I'm really happy with how this turns out. I always am. It's always a fun rust on galvanized and zinc, and they would look very similar on those metals. And you can see we've got a nice model going on. Stainless black and metal oil are available at www.sculptnouveau.com or by calling us at 760-432-8242.